My name isn't Infinity, though. What do you think existence is? Alright, so, you have a plate of spaghetti, and... You have funny looking meatballs. They turn out to be tex testicles. What do you do? Explain to me, human. What gives you the right to call yourself God when you can only move mountains? Thousands of students, as you can see on your screen, took part from Virginia to Seattle, Washington. A nationwide walkout. Fed up, they say. With lawmakers who, who offer that to See all of the cowards. Prayers instead of regulations. When I found what do you mean, no? I mean, N O, no. Get back here! No! As you know, the companies say from the United States. As the United States pull them back. Loud enough. I'll never understand people with loud trucks. Why? Grab you by the arm. Yes. And squeeze. Currently, it is raining and thundering and lightning. I have a feeling that there's a tornado somewhere. I demand obedience. I demand control. I demand respect. I'm cooking me some french fries, I am cooking me some french fries. Warrior wants some fries, and I have some fries of cooking. This is my fries, they shall be mine. It's back again. I tell you, this place is cursed. That is poison ivy growing through the floor. Why is it growing through the floor? I do not know. But it's doing something. It ain't should be, it ain't not. Ooh, that looks good. If I can get it off the fire, though. Inflatable habitat. Starship. When it's fully inflated. Radius.
Let me just end the day by saying perfect. It has been a perfect. Now I'm just lying. I'm lying. It's not been perfect. Cut it in half. Hey, Ma. What? I have the job, right? Just need uh, some forms filled out? Yeah. Hmm. Got Johnny's job. Darn it. Gonna be making some grilled steak. First guy, get the grill ready. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Huh. Ah, there it is. Technically, I didn't need it for the lover. Just don't like getting my hands dirty. The thing is about a grill is that technically speaking it can be called a pit, it can be called a grill, it can be, you know, called technically anything, you know, that you want to call it, except an oven, because an oven isn't really the accurate saying for it. Hey. Let's see if this would fit in there. There goes a warrior. Yeah, it fits, but it's not going to fit well. Usually I had something smaller than this that actually worked just as good. So I clean the pit out so you can get that airflow. By the way, this used to be part of that entire pit. Or grill, or whatever you want to call it. This is one of the reasons why I need a GoPro so I can make these videos a hell of a lot easier. There's situations that requires two hands that I'm trying to do with one hand. Let me 
you can't do it with one hand. Talk about losing one's thumb if you're not prone to doing that. Or not thumb, thumbnail. The lids of these darn things likes to get stuck in such a way where you can break a darn nail, get you know, trying to get it open. Of course, once you get the pattern down and all of that, it's very easy. Now then, you're supposed to let that set for at least one minute before you go lighting it. Basically, you let the lighter fluid get soaked in there. Making a YouTube video. Most doctors. All righty, it should be well soaked. Move that out of the way. Never have that in the same area as you're starting to fire. Same can be said about that, about the lighters. Beautiful fire. Technically, you're supposed to, you know, scrape and oil the darn thing, but whatever. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. I... Oof! Don't close the lid. Uh, when it's like that. Because, you know, what you're supposed to do is have that closed leave the lid open so it can get the proper air circulation you close the lid after the coals are red i'm going to call it quits in regards to this video but yeah that's how you start a grill that's how you put potatoes on a grill and blah 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 but don't close the lid as the fire is trying to start not because you'll get burned that's obvious no, but because you'll put the fire out if you were to do that. I wonder, how many people support the idea of the creation of entirely new weaponry? Such as sound cannons that can blow apart buildings, or blow apart human beings. Two new character designs. Attempting to murder a deputy. This man is a very dangerous person. 
If you see him, do not attempt to take him into custody by yourself. Deputy said he was last seen wearing white prison pants and a white shirt. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Dallas. Turning to Wall Street, where the major stock market indices ended the day on an... To anybody that thinks that we have fast internet, it takes five damn minutes for the damn thing to load. A fucking, like, ten second YouTube video, damn near a minute to load an entire damn page. One entire, you know, three second, I'm not three second, an entire three minute long song takes about... 15 damn minutes to fucking finish. I don't know about you, but I honestly hate the idea of it taking several damn minutes just to get something done. Or to even listen to one damn music video. It's not fast. Maybe for the first week. Maybe for the second week. It's not fast on the third, fourth, and so on. $200 to get molasses internet. At least it's better than T-Mobile. Or you pay damn near 50 bucks a month or so. Or at the very least I believe it is. Where effectively you get no damn internet whatsoever. Peace. Best internet out there. Not sure if you could see it, but that's a wolf spider. They are native to Louisiana, if memory serves correctly. And they're actually pretty docile. most famous paintings. Witnesses say a man disguised as an old woman in a wheelchair threw a piece of cake at Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. It happened at the Louvre Museum in Paris. The man also shouted, think of the earth. The cake hit the glass barrier, though, and did not damage the masterpiece. Up next I'm not sure if you could see it, but as a, you know, little moth right there. They can get bigger than that. Well, not this moth species, but some moth species can. So, this last week, a mass shooting has occurred. From the left, all one has ever heard is more gun control. From the right, more police. From the government, let's try and implement this. It seems like every time there's a mass shooting, be like five to ten years down the road, mass shooting, more gun control, more police, government implement this. You know, three to two years down the road, more gun control, more police, government implement this. And like, and my thing is that within the last, you know, couple months this year alone there's been an increase in you know violent 
gun crimes. The year before that, increase in crimes. Year before that, an increase in crimes. So on and so forth. In fact, throughout most of my life, you know, it seems like that each and every year after each, you know, gun crime and such, and after implementing more and more gun control, more and more police, it doesn't seem like it's getting better. In fact, it seems like it's only getting worse. Damn it, warrior, get down! Trying to make a video, you fucking dog. Anyway, as I was stating... It seems like no matter how one looks at it, you know, gun control and more police isn't the answer. What well, seems like the answer to me is, is actually less gun control, less police, and potentially speaking, oh, I don't know, less cowards. Maybe if we were to, you know, decrease the number of freaking cowards not willing to protect themselves or others. Maybe if we were to give people their guns back. Maybe, you know, if we create laws that doesn't punish people for defending themselves or others. Maybe if we were to, you know, implement policies that would allow people to defend themselves and to defend others. And that, you know, would enable people to not act all cowardly. Because that's what's enabling, enabling these mass shootings. Cowards. People are willing to basically, you know, take their phones out and record a fucking problem. People are willing to run away from a problem. Let somebody else deal with it. Back then, when a when a mass shooting you know occurred you know you had an entire damn town shooting at this damn bastard that's shooting at the town and some of a bitch can't move five damn steps without getting shot at it would have to you know pick a very secure area to do his damn mass shooting from but in today's time that son of a bitch can waltz with all of the swag and can ever muster into any one of our darn stores like any mass shooting like any mass shooter, any fucking body, the waltz right into our damn stores with a gun, with a gun, and be like, "Hello, that, hello, that." But if that son of a bitch knew that if he walked into a pub or walked into a store and like 100 guns gets drawn, you know, on this son of a bitch type situation, as soon as he starts popping off round after round at people, you know, like he's not gonna. Kill 10, 15, 20 people. He's gonna, you know, potentially wound three, maybe kill one, and that's it. Because he would be ate up with lead by every damn bass. And that's another thing. Who says that you need, you know, lead bullets to take somebody out? There's rubber bullets, there's tasers, there's pepper spray. If you make it where everybody has a canister of riot pepper spray or, you know, a pretty decent taser. Or one of those tasers that shoots, you know, a uh, taser charge at somebody that's capable of disconnecting from the entire darn uh, taser and, you know, grappling on them or however one put it, you know, or something, then they're going to be out cold, you know, like it's one man versus an army. If you were to make each and every situation like that. You know, the mass shootings are going to fucking plummet. Or at the very least, in my eyes, going to plummet. But all they've been doing within the last 20-something years is increasing. You know, you can't sit there and be like, Oh, you know, the answer is more gun control. That's not working. You can't sit there and be like, Oh, the answer is more police funding. That's clearly not working. You know, what we need is less cowards and more armed civilians. Yeah, so, I have a concept to throw by y'all. So, and 
I guess you could say that it revolves around religion and science. So, uh, here we go. If there wasn't... Alright, so... Hmm. How should I put this? How should I put this? Alright, so let's say that... You know... Let's say, hypothetical, that there is a theoretical god. Would this god give humanity magic? I don't mean magic as in trickery of the eyes. No, I mean you know, actual magic, where I can levitate that glass, go hocus pocus, and throw it across the darn yard at hypersonic speeds and all that type magic. And, I guess, you know, if there were to be a god, we can only look at anime why humanity does not have magic. I mean, in every anime, where magic is used, humanity has developed world-ending magic. You know, beings with the capability of ending entire continents are capable of being born. People are capable of training themselves into becoming, you know, like, the definition of God, basically. You know. We can just look at anime on why the idea of humanity having magic is a bad idea. Take for example Full Metal Alchemist in regard you know like full Al full metal alchemist in regard regards to you know biological magic biology magic and such or alchemy put it more precisely. You know, where one would fuse a living organism with another one to get a chimera and such. Or, you know, trying to bring back the dead and proceeding to get something like that of a humunculi. Or, you know, something like that. With modern day understanding and technology, one could in theory create entire organisms from dirt. Basically. I don't mean, you know, in theory, you know, bring back the dead. No, I mean in theory, you know, create silicon-based organisms. Or, you know, try and create, uh, you know, entirely new life forms by trying to recreate bacteria or cells and such using alchemy. And that's in regards to alchemy, because the thing is about bacteria and cells is that you need carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen to make the base components, such as protein, amino acids, and the building blocks for DNA, such as sugar, thymine, adenine, guanine, and, uh, see, and cytosine, with phosphate. That's how you make DNA. RNA, you know, just switches the T to a U, and you have RNA. <clears throat> it's not as simple as that, but still. You know, exonase is basically, you know, where you switch up the sugar, and sometimes the base, and such. With magic... You know, you can, you know, just manipulate atoms with magic, theoretically speaking. But yes. And then, of course, you have the factor of humanity remaining stagnant in regards to technological development. In other words, humanity is not ready for magic. If there is a god out there, you know, the dumbest thing he would do is give this species the ability to manipulate magic, knowing that full damn well, on a moment's notice, we could end this entire darn world with, ooh, I don't know, 20,000 nukes.
rocks if we so desired. In fact, in the past, we were willing to drop test two nukes on a singular country, on two separate, you know, on two separate cities, let alone drop test several nukes in deserts, you know, in regards to it all. In some cases, underground. But when it's all said and done, you know, and those are, you know, weapons that we can develop without magic. Imagine what we can do with magic. Antimatter would be able to be created like that. A breeze. In fact, we can create exotic matter out the ass if we were to have the ability to control and manipulate magic. So, I guess one of the reasonings why there might be a creator is that the simple fact that there is no magic but there is only science and physics and our reasoning why there might be a creator is that there's set laws for certain scenarios potentially set laws for certain scenarios of course, we won't figure out all said laws of physics, and we won't know that, you know, that there's, you know, only set laws. In fact, here's the thing. If we were, if we weren't living in a simulation, or if, you know, there is no God, there would be no rules, no regulations, no order, and such. And as we can see, there's at the very least some form of order and such to it all. You know, there is some form of you know, naturally occurring laws and such that exists. But of course, in the very end, you know, how can you prove something that doesn't want to be proven or that is technically? Or that is technically the entire environment that you live in. Because there's the thing. If we live in a simulation that proves that there is a God. If there is a God, you know, if we do prove one day that there is a God, then that proves that we live in a simulation. It's one of those types of scenarios. And the only way to prove it is, you know, not by looking for you know, not by looking for God or the creator or whatever, but the only way to prove it is by finding out, you know, where or not if everything is truly set in stone. While at the same time finding out where or not if everything's not set in stone. <clears throat> because like I said, Simulations has set variables with very little alteration, while at the same time non-simulations do not have set variables. In fact, it can go infinite, infinite one direction, infinite in our direction, and then if it wanted to, it can loop with inside of itself and paradoxes can theoretically exist. And of course, however, I need proper research and funding to develop this entire line of thinking. Don't have either. If I did, then I would inevitably try and research and develop it. Out of that, or pretty much write a piece of paper stating that, in theory, if there was a god, you know, then he potentially does exist. If there is not a god, then how do we know that there is not a god? Because you cannot prove or disprove what essentially cannot be proven.
My concept of a desalination plant setup. One side of the uh, one side the salt water, one side the fresh water, and then you have the farms. And then yeah, so imagine it. You kick someone onto their knees, then you pull their head back. Take your hand, rum it down their throat, grab the beating thing, rip. physically, mentally, financially. Sometimes I do cry at night. Oriana paid $120 for three cans for her six-month-old, Just Saley. She's among the 75% of American parents who rely on some formula for their babies. What's the hardest part? Not knowing if she's going to have formula. The shortage intensified earlier this year when Abbott Nutrition recalled three of its top-selling formulas after four babies became ill with bacterial infections. That prompted the shutdown of its largest plant in Michigan. With empty shelves, parents are looking online, only to find eye-popping price gouging in some cases. This 27-ounce can of specialty formula usually costs around $40. It's now going for $129. The search is so widespread that social media groups have been created to connect people with extra formula with those in need. Ali Seckle runs the formula exchange. They're having to drive several states over. They're having to ask friends and family. They're having to switch formulas like all the time. Um, and some babies are fine with that, others not so much. Pediatricians like Northwestern University's Dr. Joshua Wexler in Chicago are warning parents not to water down formula or follow recipes to make homemade formulas which are dangerous. There might be a lot Just of like how one shouldn't follow a recipe to make pizza. That's why Oriana bought extra formula that she plans to ship to other moms who asked for help online. Why are you going that extra mile for other moms? I don't know how it feels. You know, if they can't find it, I mean, if I find it, obviously I'll get it for them. And Adriana joins us now. I mean, my heart breaks for so many of these families, people with young children like yourself. I mean, what is Abbott Laboratories doing about this? Well, no, you're right. It is heartbreaking. And Abbott, which is based here in Chicago, says its plant could start back up within two weeks. But then it'll take up to two months for that new product to land on store shelves. In the meantime, the company is flying an extra formula from its FDA registered plant in Ireland to help with supply. It's an agonizingly long way. 13 mass shootings resulting in eight deaths. Back here in Washington, a bipartisan group of lawmakers is trying again to reach even a modest compromise on new gun safety legislation. There are only cowards accept this Here's idea. CBS's Scott McFarland. Well, a week that begins after another string of weekend mass shootings from Tennessee to Oklahoma end with a breakthrough on federal gun control legislation. At the White House, President Biden expressed optimism, even invoking Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell and Texas Republican John Cornyn, who's been tasked with joining bipartisan discussion. You know what pisses me off, no matter how I look at it? Ma? What? Every time a mass shooting occurs, you always hear the same damn rhetoric. You always hear the same fucking political responses. Ban guns or create more gun control or more police. They proceed to implement all three of these at times, other times only implementing two, and about 20 more mass shootings occur afterwards, proving how pointless it is to do that. And then the same damn cowards that pro that goes to these protests wanting more gun control, thinking that will solve the damn problem, thinks that more gun control is going to solve the problem. 
When, it, when in reality it has done nothing. What would solve the problem is less damn cowards. What would solve the problem is more damn civilians getting armed and dangerous. What would solve the problem is not the damn stupid fucking pointless policies that's been implemented day in and day out. It pisses the hell out of me on how they think that these same damn policies that they keep damn implementing will do shit. It will not do fucking squat. It won't do anything. It hasn't done anything. If it hasn't done anything by now, what's the point? In fact, if the damn fuckers... You know, if the 75 minute fucking bit is anything to go by, it's safe to assume that those sons of bitches are going to continuously, you know, implement laws and legislation that will not work. It has not been proven to fucking work. And Sweden is expected to quickly follow, possibly expanding the Western military alliance to 32 nations. One of the reasons Vladimir Putin attacked Ukraine was to block it from joining NATO. And tonight, Russia is lashing out. We get more from CBS's Charlie Daggett in Ukraine. Further cornered by Finland's NATO aims and facing a fierce fight on the battlefield, Russia has pulled the trigger on another weapon in its arsenal. Effectively cutting off gas supplies to Europe a day after the Ukrainian government halted gas transfers through its territory. Yeah. Ukrainian forces have launched a blistering counterattack outside Kharkiv, recapturing villages surrounding Ukraine's second largest city. <laughs> Running gun battles, street by street, pushing soldiers back and cutting off critical supply lines to the Donbass region. Yet further south, villages and towns have faced a relentless Russian bombardment by land and air. This is a terrifying daily reality for those in the path of Russia's war machine, never knowing when the next airstrike or missile will come or where it will land. It's where we found dazed and angry residents on a dirt road in Bakhmut asking why a massive explosion that left an enormous crater in this quiet lane obliterated their homes. We need help, angry residents shouted in despair. Everything is destroyed, broken. Fixing it will take more than a few men with shovels. The devastation is beyond simple repair. An elderly woman salvages what she can from the wreckage, finding some value in a solitary strip of roofing before waving goodbye to the ruins, not knowing what other horrors tomorrow may bring. As we visited the front lines, we've seen Russian forces hit not only railway lines, industrial centers, and military sites, but also residential areas with no obvious target. The goal to destroy weapons and infrastructure and terrorize the public. Nora. Charlie Daggett out in Ukraine, thank you. Here CBS's Roxana Sever. A day meant to mourn the death of journalist Shireen Abu Akhla turned tense when Israeli police suddenly moved in, swinging their batons. At one point, the pallbearers, trying to reach a church in Jerusalem, nearly dropped the casket. The police say rioters have hurled stones and other objects at them, but the White House is calling these images disturbing. This is a day where we should all be marking, including everyone there, uh, the memory of a remarkable I bet there's more behind it than that. We regret the intrusion into what should have been a peaceful procession. But it's still disgraceful, disrespecting the dead like that. on Wednesday while covering an Israeli raid in the West Bank town of Jenin. Israel initially suggested she was killed by Palestinian gunmen. But today, the military said it can't unequivocally determine the source of the fatal gunshot. 
Violence has surged here in recent months, with at least 16 Israelis killed by Palestinians since March, and around 30 Palestinians reportedly killed in confrontations with Israeli forces. The funeral of Abu Ahmed, who was widely respected in the Arab world, eventually took place today mostly peacefully. Thousands of Palestinians said goodbye to a woman they now see as a martyr. What do you think she would have made of that role? Lena Abu Ahmed is her niece. Well, knowing her, um, I mean, she was big in life, and she was even bigger in the. What we want is justice. We want accountability. We want them to be held accountable for assassinating and for killing. Mm -hmm. Tonight, the Palestinian Authority yeah, 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 yeah. says a preliminary investigation found that Israeli forces deliberately killed Abu Ghraib. Yeah, she died from a gunshot wound to her head. Might Palestinian be, yeah, officials yeah, are yeah. denying Israel's request to examine the bullet. Margaret. And to greedy ass churches across the world that does this type of shit. Go fuck off. Ain't no sense in paying that much for the. Uh, I'm here to help. Please don't kill me. It's nine o'clock in the morning, a.m. I wonder, is this concept being used currently? Not sure if y'all can see the lettering and crap. Yeah, so. United States and China might be entering a war over Taiwan. Do you support it? Alright, so. We have a family friend named Joe Bill. Is that right? Yes. So, these are his jalapeno peppers. Right? suffering because of these god damn what in god's tarnation does he breed those peppers with god for the last three days three days damn it my stomach has not been fine but of course i've been eating a pepper or like just one or two peppers just fuck you up with just god damn <laughs> I need to stop eating Joe Bill's peppers. God fucking damn. Ain't that right, baby boy? Yeah, ain't that right? Emoji man, little brother, and other little brother. In the future, y'all be seeing, you know, hopefully there'll be videos, man, of pea plants throughout this entire garden.
potentially pea, pea plants throughout the entire garden. Here we go again with the gun control BS. Do you think we need more gun control? The answer is no. Hey Hulk, I need to ask you something. Just kind of just let him play his games. Here for a moment. Watching him play the game sometimes, like Metal Gear, Metal Gear One and Two. Hulk, I need to ask you something. Paper boy, here. Are you real? Are you real, baby boy? Because I've been hearing on the internet of late that birds aren't real. Are you real? Hmm. Are you real, baby boy? Are you? What the fuck's going on? I agree. So, I've captured me a fly. Not sure if you can see it. But yeah, capture me a fly is my pet now. I have a pet fly. I just be wasting time swinging. So, ma. Thursday, gotta go check on Johnny's to see if I can get the uh, Johnny's job. Yeah? Yeah. Hopefully I get it. If you think about it, most of the United States' problems can be solved with a couple of things. More factories, more small businesses, and more homes. I wonder what could be done with that type of physics. I wonder what that entire scenario could be used for. In theory, one can make a 
Very, very small space station. One module, you know, one module in size, one human. I can't believe that. You better believe it, Major. If I have my way, you'll all be court-martialed. So, what is y'all's thoughts upon the concept of creating homemade space probes and... Yeah. And not only that, but making homemade space probes. They can go from land to air to orbit. Yeah. With one single stage. Not only that, but homemade space probes. They can be theoretically made in today's time. Utilizing stuff they can buy offline and or from a hardware store. And such. If you have any ideas and or concepts of it and is capable of posting links to said ideas and concepts, please post them you know in the comments below. Well hello there. Yeah, Fox Me God. Beautiful fox. Anywho, as it be saying, as it be saying, but yes, comment below upon your concept and or idea and such. And it must stay in the realms of physics, like known physics. It must stay in the realms of reality and it must be able to you know go from point A to point B without much trouble and please do research on this okay in regards to the upcoming compilation video that will be made once the internet is back on in the top right corner of the screen will be cards to all subscribers of mine. In regards to the last video, apparently it's not past May 23rd, it is May 12th. Milk is not supposed to turn, turn into cheese into a fridge unless a fridge is broken. That tells me that everything in here is potentially spoiled. Wonderful. What else is fucking new? Quality materials and professional installation by the owner. We specialize in wood, ceramic, carpet, waterproof flooring, and back splashes. Our beautiful custom showers come with a lifetime warranty against leaks. Floor Creations is ready to create your dreams. So, Ma, why is there no air conditioner? It's hot as hell. to think Kazakhstan is a freaking Pokemon. I bet that one...
Hmm. A realization is probably American. He's probably a fellow countryman. Uh, it's funny until you realize that no, there's people out there like that. My God, it's spreading. Grass, keeping lawns mowed, and hedges trimmed are key. When outdoors, especially in a wooded area, keep your skin covered with clothing. Wear insect repellent with DEET. Then do a tick check. Look behind knees, in the scalp, and underarms. Ticks should be carefully removed with tweezers. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Bitch. It is you. I assume. been getting dirt again, haven't you? Marital problems. <laughs> Let me clean the camera.
the realization that we haven't had a nuclear winter yet. Those are all nuclear testing sites, if I do say so myself. Not gonna lie, it's a very good workout. Tell me the name of God. Now why would I tell you your name? Good day, everybody. <sighs> so the topic of this YouTube video is pretty much the same like every other YouTube video, just random. But anywho, so the topic of today, though, revolves around failure. Or put it more precisely, putting somebody in a position where they can fail. If you put somebody into an environment where they would fail, they would theoretically inevitably fail. It, however, if you were to put somebody into an environment where they would thrive and succeed, that's an entirely different story. Because if they're put into an environment where they can theoretically reach their potential and beyond it, then they will do exactly that. However, there is one problem to it. If the environment is designed like that, and everybody keeps, you know, inflating his or hers, you know, already inflated ego, they would inevitably fall flat on their face, especially once reality hits them, you know, hits them over the head with a baseball bat. With that said, always ground yourself in reality, always suspect failure, especially in an environment designed for you to fail. Then, of course, you have the factor of if you put somebody into a situation where they will. No, 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 rephrase it. If you were to treat somebody as if they're an animal, as if they are scum, they, then they will act as the thing that you believe them to be. They will not try and do the opposite because they already know that whatever they do will not be good enough, and whatever they do, they will still be looked at as if they are the scum of the freaking earth. So, if you want to create better human beings, you would have to put them in environments where they're capable of succeeding, capable of being grounded into reality, and capable of not being seen as an animal. Of course, however, how does one achieve any of this? Don't know. Humans been asking themselves for years, generations, how does one prevent evil? And their response is, treat you know, evil humans as if they are evil. And always look down upon those that you believe to be evil. Even on reality, it's the opposite. But, yes, this is my advice in regards to it all. If you want to consider it advice, opinion, or whatever. And people are sick and tired of you. So, 
I have 391 subscribers. Me God. Ain't that something? I hope that once I wake up in the morning that I would have 400 400 subscribers by tomorrow wouldn't that be something remember that time when you you know accidentally left the milk in the fridge and it decided to become cheese. That's exactly what happened here. I'm going to get y'all to imagine something very painful in five seconds. Imagine this going down your urethra, your piss hole. Yes. Sonic Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Milkshake. Yeah, this is going to add to calories. The increase in drawing YouTube videos will be post you know is for my X art channel. This uh, quiet neighborhood, this quiet city has just been torn apart by the events of what happened inside the school behind me. Every now and again you see family The dumbest advice you can be ever given during a mass shooting or any shooting is run, hide and fight. Dumbest line, dumbest advice, just fight, don't be a coward. The best part of caramel popcorn. So, I've been asked this question a lot. What's the reason why I start this YouTube channel? And the answer is, I don't really know. I don't have an answer to it. There is no reason. I wonder why. It's become acceptable to use violence. It's, it's become acceptable for these. Take what you want. Was ninety nine percent certain to have been biological assault. Who's he meow from? Today, today, I work.
First needs to get the shirt and the hat. Must always have the hat and shirt. I found something funny a while ago. Want, want to hear me laugh? <laughs> Bobby, do you think me holding this is weird? This is completely and utterly normal. I mean, ain't this what normal folks do? How is this blue pan? Nah, no, no, that, that's the dust bag. That's the dust bag? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, and if you're sucking that water, you take it off. Yeah. If you just vacuum it out of the floorboards, leave it on. Hmm. Question is, how powerful is it? Powerful enough. I don't want to eat school. Mm. So I tell you, shit, it don't work no more. Fucking wore out. I got about 20 years ago. Going to see if it works. It blows! Ah, it scares the warrior! Warrior! Are you afraid of the vacuum, baby boy? Just don't get your nut caught in it! So, it's so so so. I am going to state two things in regards to the making of this video. Two milestones, in a way. I have reached, or the channel has reached. 450, not 50, 14 subscribers, 400, 414 subscribers, which, you know, 
which is good news. Ain't that right, Lucy Lou? The I Gotta Kill Something channel has reached 414 subscribers. I wish you were alive to see it. Anywho. But that's one milestone. The other milestone is... Uh, let's see here. You know, I have reached my 1,000th video within the last few days. So in other words, I now have 1,000 YouTube videos that y'all can pretty much look at and, you know, watch and all of that as much as all hearts, you know, like. Of course, however, there won't be, you know, like, obviously, there won't be, you know, a video that everybody likes, so, you know, watch at your own risk, I guess, and there may, may be some content in my past previous videos that people may not like, but yeah, you know. If you don't like it, that's understandable, but... Mm. 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 Yes. 414 subscribers with 1,000 YouTube videos to my name. <sighs> Technically speaking, I am... About, you know, I'm almost halfway there to reach the 1,000 subscriber mark and to start finally getting an income, which I did some research and it would be about six, like at the lowest, potentially speaking, about six dollars per 1,000 views and about 18 dollars per 1,000 views so and at the highest point per you know like per uh, 48 hours is about 10,000 views you know per 48 hours at the highest point at the lowest point it's about you know like 4,000 views and such so, be looking at somewhere around alternating like $24 to $60, you know, once every 48 hours. Wouldn't that be something? But per month, you know, don't know. <sighs> Who knows, I wouldn't mind saving up enough money to uh, try and hire some folks to do some cloning for me. But cloning what? Don't know. But that would probably not be a good idea. Ooh, shroom. Eh, yeah, stuck on my foot. Shrooms. I won't claim to know the intricacies of the situation. I share my opinion based on what I researched. It's obviously not perfect. And I'm also aware that in a continued and welcome surprise for this channel, the Philippines represents my second largest demographic of viewers. So obviously some of our friends from the Philippines... Simple, uh, 
and alluding to the concerns that there were previously about the software issues that uh, Boeing 737 MAX 8 models previously had. First of all, I want to separate just...